Back, he likes to be called His Royal Highness, and late last week he made headlines by pledging $1.4 billion to the United Nations to help the poor. But this self-proclaimed prince, Bep Van Eldick, is in fact a pauper, a bankrupt Queenslander, Queensland builder no less, and serious questions are now being raised about the real extent of his bank balance. Martin King has this exclusive interview with His Royal Highness. We need to help the poor people, try to get an equal life in our system in the world. It's too unbalanced and has been too long. He says he's a prince with almost one and a half billion dollars to give to the poor. And at this United Nations conference in Melbourne, the man who claims to be His Royal Highness, Prince Haji Mohud Al Elsagoff Van Eldin from North Borneo, was richly received. So what proportion of this billion dollars is your own personal money? Uh, I would leave that out at this point of time. Can I ask you this question? Is it your money you're pledging to give away? I'm responsible for the money. But is it yours? Partially, yes. He likes to be called your Royal Highness. But is this man a mega rich benevolent billionaire prince or a pauper and a pretender? I've been up, I've been down. People say I've been bankrupt. Well, not only once, four or five times. You've been bankrupt four oh, or five times? Yes, in life. That's the only way you go through life. I came through the University of Hard Knocks. And that's where I came from. Actually, he came from Holland to Australia in 1955 with the rest of his family. They settled in Mackay, central Queensland. Then he raised his own family. He was known then as Bep Van Eldick. Is it a fact, as your brother says, that, that you did disappear from Queensland 17, 18 years ago no, and, and leave debt? I can tell you I went on the invitation to the Philippines by the president at the time, President Marcos. My family knows why I went there. I went there to do a housing project. The fact is the alleged billion-dollar prince from Mackay is a failed builder. He was first bankrupted in 1971, then again in 1978. He not only left debts behind, he left a wife and seven children disappearing to the Philippines to begin a new life. I still love my father, like, you know, I've got nothing against him. He is my dad, so... Well, there you are, you hold this, and then I'll pull this. I hope you like red wine. That's what I Vicky, his daughter. It was hard in the beginning. Um, Mum had to suffer a lot for us kids, you know. She could have just dumped us kids and left, but she stuck by us and she did well. Vicky was just nine when her father left. Oh, yeah, I've felt angry plenty of times since he's been gone and sad, yeah. Sometimes I'd miss school just to hopefully stay at home and hopefully he'll come home. I have two families. I love them both. My you children. have two families? Yes. Well, one in Queensland and one in the Philippines? Yes. My Filipino wife is with me. Yeah. And uh, my children all love me and I love them. It's Bep, yes. Only he could come up with something like this. Anna is Bep Van Eldick's sister. He could sell you a pair of sand shoes, for the, uh, an old pair of sand shoes, for the price of a new pair. And that's exactly what he was. What do you call that, a con man? But no matter what the past, the alleged prince says what's important is the future of the poor. When will the charity see the colour of your money? That's already been in process. We are, matter of fact, we are only waiting for Gift Foundation to put the appropriate documents in the banking system. If he's got this money, look after his family here first, his kids and his wife. Yes. I believe their first start will be with uh, Ethiopia at this point of time and different countries I've mentioned to me, uh, which are critically needed, like New Guinea, like Korea, I think. So they are looking at that. So you think Korea, Ethiopia, New yeah. Guinea? Yes, these countries will definitely benefit of this. The first, because they are needed. Ask this mystery man specific questions about where his money comes from and you get the right royal runaround. What we can tell you, though, is that when he travels, he travels in style. He and his entourage are shacked up here at the salubrious Windsor Hotel in Melbourne. Six rooms at $500 each. That's $3,000 every night. And can I ask you, how did you make that money? Uh, this money has been honest hard work. I have been in international banking for the last 18 years. I have been doing monetary funds for the petrol dollars for the Middle East. And my father always used to say, if anything that boy would do, he would sell ice to the Eskimos. That's exactly where he is, and <laughs> that's it. 
The so-called prince claims he was adopted by the Sultan of Sabah in North Borneo, hence his wealth. So how powerful are you, Your Highness? And actually speaking, I'm the Sultan. I'm the power. You are the power. I never have abused it or never will use that kind of power I have because I have tremendous powers under the Sultanate. Mm. I have power over life and death. The former bankrupted builder has suffered a terrible pasting from the press since he pledged all that money. But Your Highness, this, this here says that, that you've been exposed as a fake. That must upset you too, uh, No, no, because I have documents to prove I'm not. Beb's brother John says he still owed $10,000 by His Highness. These awful things your brother has said. Well, you know, it's easy to write something. Do you, do you owe him $10,000? Like no, I don't owe him no? $10,000. Yeah. This person is my brother. You know, he is there and he's got this prince title. You know, what does this make me, a princess or what? Are you going to ring your brother and give him a good tellings off about this? No. What your Highness? I? No. No. Well, I would. If that enjoys him, fine. It's not... But, he's, but he says he's your cuckoo. Oh, well, that's quite okay. You think I'm cuckoo? Martin King reporting there with His Highness.